Hello, you're watching Sideline on MNB World, an interview program that invites various guests for a conversation on important themes. And today we have invited to our program Under Secretary General of the United Nations for Peacekeeping Operations, Mr. Jean Pierre Lacroix. Hello, how are you doing? Good, thank you for having me in the program. Jean-Pierre Lacroix brings to the position over 25 years of political and diplomatic experience with a focus on multilateral organizations and on United Nations activities and programs. Lacroix served from 2014 to 2017 as Director for United Nations, International Organizations, Human Rights and Francophonie at the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His previous appointments include Ambassador of France to Sweden. He also served as advisor at the cabinet of French Prime Minister. First, I would like to start our interview with the purpose of your visit to Mongolia. Well, Mongolia is uh, a very important uh, contributor to peacekeeping operation. It currently has uh, 887 uh, peacekeepers, and I think that relative to the population, it's probably one of the biggest contributor uh, per capita, if you will. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, there is uh, an important conference uh, which was opened this morning by His Excellency the President of Mongolia uh, on uh, women in peacekeeping. And women in peacekeeping is a very important topic. Uh, we want to increase the role of women in peacekeeping. We consider that it's uh, of major importance for the effectiveness of peacekeeping. But I think uh, it's an opportunity for me to uh, also thank Mongolia for its support to peacekeeping, uh, to pay tribute uh, to the uh, outstanding uh, service uh, of the Mongolian men and women serving and the, the UN flag. And also it's an opportunity to uh, discuss what more we can do, what more peacekeeping can do uh, with Mongolia. I think there is a potential for increasing our cooperation. So all of these topics will be uh, on our agenda. Mm -hmm. What is the main role of the United Nations peacekeeping operations? Well, peacekeeping operations uh, are very different. Uh, some of them have a, a role which is essentially about uh, preserving a ceasefire and others, particularly in Africa, are a much more complex uh, peacekeeping operation. They have a very important role in uh, protecting civilians. They have a role in supporting political efforts toward, towards durable peace. Uh, they also monitor uh, human rights and they work in building state capacity, particularly in the area of uh, justice, police and correction. Uh, but I think ultimately the role of peacekeeping operation is about supporting efforts towards durable peace. This is really what it is about. And for that we have uh, uh, very diverse uh, colleagues, you know, civilian colleagues. Uh, police officers, military officers, we work very uh, very hard with the humanitarian agencies and even the non-governmental organization. So peacekeeping is uh, also about uh, partnership, it's about working together to help communities and to promote peace. Mm -hmm. Talking about the partnership, this year Mongolia marks the 20th year anniversary since it started joining UN peacekeeping operations and to your opinion, what is the contribution of Mongolia to the peacekeeping operations? Well, peacekeepers from Mongolia are highly respected. Uh, they are very professional. I think they have the right mindset, uh, which is a combination of uh, understanding that uh, uh, today uh, peacekeeping needs to be well equipped, well trained, also robust, because we have what we call robust mandate. Uh, but at the same time, uh, being able and willing to engage with the communities and build trust with the communities. And this is what we appreciate uh, with the Mongolian peacekeepers. Uh, they have excellent standard of uh, conduct and discipline also, which is critically important. So this is why uh, we believe that, uh, as I was indicating, that uh, uh, there would be a potential for doing more with uh, Mongolia because uh, we trust Mongolia as a very solid partner in peacekeeping. And we are also very happy to see that Mongolia is taking a leadership role when it comes to promoting women in peacekeeping because we keep saying more women in peacekeeping means a more effective peacekeeping. In 2002, Mongolia adopted a law on the participation of military and police personnel in UN peacekeeping operations and other international operations and began to contribute military observers to UN peacekeeping. 
This year marks the 20th anniversary of Mongolia taking part in UN peacekeeping operations. Since 2002, Mongolia has deployed more than 19,000 peacekeepers to UN peacekeeping in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kosovo, Sierra Leone, Chad, South Sudan, Western Sahara, Congo, and Georgia. As of August 2021, Mongolian military observers have served in Congo, Western Sahara, and South Sudan. The first Mongolian female soldier joined a UN peacekeeping mission in 2006 as an unarmed military observer to the United Nations mission for the referendum in Western Sahara. Since then, a total of 911 women have served as peacekeepers, after which 853 personnel, or 93%, served in the military and the rest as military observers and liaison officers. For the last couple of years, uh, global community and international society has suffered a lot due to the global pandemic. And did the COVID-19 pandemic had an impact on uh, United Nations peacekeeping operations? Well, certainly it had an impact in the sense that uh, our operations were uh, affected by the pandemic. At the same time, uh, we took measures very early on to make sure that uh, our operation will be able to continue. Uh, we organized the rotation of troops and uh, individual uh, personnel uh, in a way uh, that uh, would uh, you know, mitigate and limit uh, the uh, uh, propagation of the virus in uh, peacekeeping. And as a result of that, our peacekeeping operations have been able to continue operating. But uh, our peacekeepers were also very effective in helping communities cope uh, with uh, uh, COVID-19. I believe, though, that uh, uh, we have to be uh, cautious because the COVID-19 is not over. And I also believe that the impact of COVID-19 on uh, the economy, on the livelihood of people uh, is still very, very strong. So uh, it's not completely uh, over, but I believe that uh, our peacekeepers uh, with the um, very good engagement and cooperation from troop contributing countries, including Mongolia, have been able to um, overcome uh, the, the main risk of the COVID-19, which would have been uh, you know, the, the, um, the, the risk of uh, not being able to continue delivering on our mandate. And we have been able to, uh, together, working together to avoid that risk. Mm -hmm. uh, United Nations peacekeeping operations are mainly conducted in areas with military conflict, with the armed conflict, and what kind of measures are taken from the United Nations to improve the publicity among the local uh, population? Yes, no, I think it's very important to communicate uh, well on uh, what our men and women you know, are doing under the blue flag because they are making a tremendous difference. I think that uh, uh, the peacekeepers, including the Mongolian peacekeepers, are saving lives uh, every day. Uh, I have very concrete example of what the Mongolian peacekeepers have done in terms of uh, uh, you know, saving uh, people in South Sudan who were affected by uh, cattle raid and uh, uh, you know, helping uh, 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 helping in the transfer of those wounded personnel to, to, to medical facilities, uh, repairing a hospital in the area of, uh, uh, of uh, Bentiu in South Sudan, where the Mongolian peacekeepers are deployed. So I think it's important to communicate about the good things that our peacekeepers are doing. Um, and I think it's also important to hear more uh, from the people we are serving, uh, because they are well positioned to tell uh, the rest of the world uh, you know, about what uh, uh, the peacekeepers are doing and how it uh, makes a positive impact on their lives. So we were putting, uh, we're putting a lot of emphasis on uh, improving that kind of communication mm -hmm. from the field so that people know more about, uh, you know, what uh, these, the impact of peacekeeping in the field. Mm -hmm. That leads us to another question. Uh, should women take part in peacekeeping operations and why? Well, um, having more women in peacekeeping is one of our top priorities, and there are several reasons for that. First, um, peacekeeping operations are diverse. They're about civilian, police, military, humanitarian working together. And it's important to uh, make sure that peacekeeping operations reflect the diversity of the communities in which they are operating. And that by definition, the diversity uh, is about gender balance, 50-50. Second, 
Um, when we have more women in peacekeeping, we have a better work environment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We have a work environment which is uh, more open, uh, more creative, more inclusive, but uh, we also do better in terms of conduct and discipline, including preventing uh, 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 phenomena such as sexual harassment, sexual exploitation and abuse. Third, the peacekeeping, uh, uh, the, peace, the female peacekeepers, mm -hmm. Uh, make a tremendous difference when it comes to building trust with the communities mm -hmm. uh, because those communities by definition you know they are very much about women children mm -hmm. sometimes very vulnerable mm -hmm. um, and uh, when we have more women uh, including women in uniform uh, it makes a huge difference because uh, uh, they are much more able to build trust with those communities um, but that's not the only uh, role, of course, of women. We believe that uh, women can, uh, you know, do pretty much everything in peacekeeping, just as men. Uh, we consider that uh, peacekeeping should be also uh, at the forefront of promoting uh, gender equality and the promotion of women. Uh, that's uh, a UN goal, you know, that goes beyond peacekeeping, but we want to be part of that too. And the fact that Mongolia is taking a leadership role uh, in this area is very important and highly appreciated. Thank you. And uh, to your opinion, what kind of reforms and improvements are needed in United Nations peacekeeping operations? Of course, we need to adapt constantly because the environment in which we are working, our peacekeepers are working, is changing. It's becoming more complex, it's becoming more dangerous in many places. Uh, the world is, uh, uh, is uh, full of tension, so we need to constantly adapt. What that means is uh, uh, better training. I uh, will be visiting the training center in Mongolia uh, tomorrow, and I think it's uh, very important to promote training. Mm -hmm. We need to promote uh, uh, change in uh, our equipment because we want to make the best use of uh, te new technology. We want to make sure that our peacekeepers will be better protected as well. We need to make efforts when it comes to uh, having better information mm -hmm. um, about the, the threats, you know, the potential uh, threats against civilians and against our peacekeepers. So uh, there's need, there needs to be constant efforts to, to change and adapt. Uh, I, I believe that uh, all peacekeeping operations have to be in, uh, in a permanent state of transition, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that's the purpose of making all these efforts, including better uh, cooperation between the civilian, the military, the police, the humanitarian, better integration, uh, better communication, uh, better uh, efforts in terms of uh, conduct and discipline and partnership with other partners, you know, working in the field. All of these uh, are top priorities um, of uh, what we call the Action for Peacekeeping Initiative, which is the, the global initiative by the UN Secretary General on improving peacekeeping. Okay, my last question will be how uh, shortly you can say why United Nations member states should support United Nations peacekeeping operations? Very shortly. Well, peacekeeping is a unique partnership um, and it involves uh, the vast majority of our member states mm -hmm. as troop contributing countries, as police contributing countries, but also as members of uh, uh, the bodies, the intergovernmental bodies that decide on our mandate on our budget as well and um, you know it's really about uh, a collective partnership uh, for the purpose of advancing peace so i think that uh, uh, we need to capitalize you know to we, we need to build on that uh, level of partnership uh, but since we're talking about uh, the efforts that are needed to make sure that peacekeeping will be uh, will continue to be relevant, will, con will continue to be effective, you know, in this changing environment. Uh, this partnership is more important than ever. And the partnership with our troop contributing countries, like Mongolia, mm -hmm. is absolutely critical. So that's why uh, we want to continue working with uh, Mongolia. We want to continue to work with uh, our troop contributing country, particularly those that are really involved and uh, uh, interested in uh, taking forward all these efforts. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. That was the new episode of Sideline. Today we had Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix, Under Secretary General of the United Nations for Peace Operations. We'll see you next time with more stories and updates.